Hello, funeral directors. Hope you're having a great day. My name is Tyler Fraser, and I'm your host for this funeral radio podcast called Success Leaves Clues. It's really a pleasure of mine to have this maiden's voyage of the first show. It's the uh, first episode of Success Leaves Clues. And, you know, as I move along in my career, I was just so, um, I was inspired to do something that um, really highlighted funeral professionals that are doing well in their business and um, really try to take some of the information that they've used to grow their business and get it out there to the funeral professional community. Um, so today I have the pleasure of talking to Alan Dave of Alan Dave Funerals and Cremation. Hello, sir. Nice to see you today. Pleasure, Tyler. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks so much. So, um, Alan, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about um, how you started? Because this is your second career. Is that right? Yes, it is my second career. Uh, formerly, before entering into the death care industry, I was a wedding and event planner. And so, um, so there were similarities between weddings and funerals if you remove the descendant from the services. Uh, and so that's how I got started. I saw so much similarity. And so we're just a block away from the uh, uh, Museum of uh, Funeral History, is that right? Yes, we are. We are within one mile from the Funeral History of Museum, and it's a wonderful facility if you haven't had a chance to visit it here in Houston, Texas. So um, if you could just tell me a little bit about um, your operation here. What, you know, where's your funeral home? Um, what kind of services do you offer? Actually, the Allen Day Funeral Homes and Crematorium, it's a, a combination of uh, three funeral homes and one crematory. And also we have a pet side of the business called Seventh Heaven Pet Crematorium. So we're not only taking care of the human side of the business, but our family pets also. Uh, as far as we're located in Northwest Houston, and then we have two other rural markets, which is the Brenham and Caldwell areas, and then also Carthage, Texas. Uh, so, um, but as far as we started our business here in 2007, uh, we came in to serve the community of Northwest Houston, but that's expanded throughout all the Houston metropolitan. We've been very, very successful at providing premier services to Houstonians uh, and Texans across Texas. So uh, the the name of this show is Success Leaves Clues. Can you give some of the listeners three of the top things that jump out at you when it comes to uh, what's helped you grow your business and sustain your business? Well, one of the things I think that has really helped us is, is uh, integrity. Being honest with our families, talking to them and giving them the right information. So one of the, the sayings is pretty much giving the families every option uh, and making sure that they have the information so they can make an informed choice. Uh, number two, I'm big on presentation. Uh, presentation is, is unique that separates us from other funeral homes. So, um, uh, and then the professionalism within our staff. Uh, so those are the three areas that I think that, that separate us from some of the other funeral homes. Yeah, I can attest, you know, the presentation in this funeral home is beautiful. It's, it's really professional. The um, the uh, finishing on the uh, um, on the furniture, the presentation of this just looks gorgeous. So I can you know I would agree that the presentation is is very nice here. Well, as a wedding and event planner, you know, as far as the brides, they demanded, you know, everything that had to be perfect, and it was very difficult in order to do so every time. But we only had one chance to do a wedding. We, even though we had a, a rehearsal maybe the day before, okay, but the funerals, there's no rehearsals. So we have to do everything as perfected as we possibly can from the beginning. So you mentioned integrity. Um, how has integrity brought you more business or continued to sustain your business? Well, one of the things about it though is that we have um, uh, contractual obligations to these families. If you tell the family that you're gonna do something, that we wanna make sure that we do it from A to Z. Most important is capturing the details uh, and the essence of what they are looking for. Each family is different. And so there are no two families that are alike. And so when they come into the funeral home, one of the things about our professional funeral directors is they spend time discovering the essence of an individual. What type of services would they prefer to have for their family? And that's very, very key. You have to spend time 
discovering what type of service they want. Once you do that, then pretty much you just begin to fill in the gap. But one of the things that's most important about Allen Day Funeral Homes and Cremation Tribute Center here is that we keep ceremony a part of everything. And so, and I think that's really made us uh, unique and different. So if we had a family that came in that simply wanted a direct cremation, then we begin to talk to them about what are we gonna do in order for the funeral? And say, well, we don't want a funeral, we just want a direct cremation. And then we explain to them is that, you know, it's best to go ahead and have some type of service because if you do not have a service, you're gonna begin to have a service every day once you leave here. You're gonna have a service at the grocery store, you're gonna have it at the hair salon because people are gonna ask you about your father and they're gonna say, well, dad died and there was no memorialization. So in order to prevent that, we're trying to help families to keep ceremony as a part of their services. You know, I recently went through the Celebrant uh, in Foundation and Institute course online, and a lot of the attendees uh, both do weddings and funerals. Yes. Uh, and so I can see, you know, the, how uh, the uh, importance of ceremony has kind of continued to move from your experience in weddings and kind of helped you in funeral services. But I think also it's a mistake that uh, some of the other funeral homes and funeral directors are, are not doing. They're not placing the emphasis on the ceremonial portion. And I think as a death care industry, if we spend more time in that particular area, then people will have a better value of what we do and how we do it. But most of all, we're trying to keep the ceremonial component in there for the families. Because the funeral is sure, we have someone that's passed away, but the funeral is for the living. And we're just trying to make sure that we give a, that person's life a, you know, just a, just a beautiful farewell. And, and I just think it's just important. As your business continues to grow, and I know that you've recently um, focused more on Houston and now are looking to position yourself for growth, um, would you say that you're more focused on providing those three things or are you also trying new things? Oh, we are, we are, we are very innovative here at Allen Day Funeral Homes, okay? We're trying new technology. Uh, every time that we go out to one of the national conventions or to the state convention, we bring back those ideas and concepts and we explain it to our professional staff and we introduce it to our families and um, they really kind of give us the, you know, they like it or they dislike it, how it can work, how it can work, Work better, uh, but as for us with technology, it's definitely, definitely important. And you know, a couple of examples as for us, I know I started doing what I call wedding tribute videos many years ago. We call them love stories. Now we have tribute videos that's been around for about 20 years, but today's technology allows us to do more things. For example, send a link to an individual and they can share that link with other family members and we can have more photos and be more creative with the video tribute standpoint. One of the things about it though, is I like your company and the, the, uh, the digital uh, biometrics that you provide with us. So we're able to take the fin fingerprint of a loved one and we're able to create jewelry with that. We also are able to do positive identification through the process. So when we pick up a loved one from a hospital or from a home, once they brought into our care, we fingerprint that individual. And then that could be, uh, carried on in the verification process, especially if a family choose cremation. Uh, and then we have that information that we have captured that fingerprint. So if they wanted to use jewelry and buy uh, more uh, heirlooms for their families, it's a great way of doing so. You know, being focused on a specific, um, let's say you were to offer a funeral director the X factor, the silver bullet, you know, um, and I know, as you said, uh, there are several things that contribute to the success, uh, integrity, presentation, ceremony, being innovative. But let's say you were to put emphasis on one and say, this is what you need to focus on if you're trying to build your funeral business. Well, the number one thing, if you're trying to, feel your, to build your business, I think if you can create the value and keep the value in ceremony, okay, is because there's a disconnect. And with the rise of cremation, especially when we come down to direct cremation, uh, I think that, that, that people may not want to have a full-blown 
traditional funeral service that their grandparents may have had. But I think you should have some type of ceremonial component. You're gonna be doing two things. First of all, you're gonna be helping the, the immediate family with the funeral process and helping them to, to appreciate the life that was lived. Okay, and then secondly, as a funeral professional, your funeral home is dependent upon ceremony. We have all of these beautiful facilities all across the United States, but if we're not having ceremony, who's gonna be usually utilizing these chapels into the future? So we have to do things today in order to keep ceremony as a part of our services. As you continue to work in your business, um, I'm sure some difficulties have jumped out at you. Um, and, and what I'd like to focus on is primarily, it is the three primary things that you would recommend a funeral home pays attention to and stays away from? Well, one of the things is, is that it's gonna be very important that funeral homes educate their consumers, their families, about prearranging funerals, prearranging the type of funeral that they want, allowing them to be able to understand that there are payment options. We have insurance products, we have trust accounts, but allowing the family to be able to come in to be able to select the services, the merchandise, to begin to pay for things in advance of service at today's cost, which will be greatly reduced. And if they compare, if they plan their funeral today and they pass away 25 years from now, then they're gonna receive today's cost and not the cost 25 years with inflation and everything that's going in. I think that, uh, that for every, at need funeral that you have, you need to be selling two pre-need services for every at need service. And that's gonna give you growth into the future. So five to seven years from now, you should be able to double your case volume by selling advanced planning uh, funerals and cremation plans. So that's, that's very difficult uh, to do if you don't have a prearranged department. So I would recommend that you have uh, family service councils available, available to, uh, to help you grow your firm. So you're not gonna grow without a pre-need department. One of the things that's most challenging to consumers are the ones who are not prepared financially. And they walk into the funeral home and they need our assistance. Uh, and we uh, try to do everything we possibly can to assist them, but sometimes families may not have the financial means. And so it's our job as professionals to be able to give them as many options as we possibly can. Most of the time, I think that time can resolve the, the economic side of a family. If they come in and, and they, a death occurred and they walk into the funeral home and they don't have several thousands of dollars, if you just give them a little bit more time, I think that would help uh, families uh, to be able to walk through uh, the financial component. And people can't grieve when they're faced with a financial crisis. That's very, very, very tough. And so uh, most important, if you could do anything you can to help that family, they will appreciate it. Is there anything that you're um, uh, specifically uh, concerned about when it comes to making sure that you're continuing to grow? Um, anything that um, you would recommend that a funeral director um, stays away from? Well, one of the things I think of staying away from is, um, is not providing the family's choices. Sometimes, uh, and, and, and excuse the way I'm gonna say this, but there's some, what I call some lazy funeral directors out there. Okay, and, and I'm not gonna try to degrade myself or any others, but they simply take the shortcut okay, versus taking an extra 15 or 20 minutes or an extra hour going above and beyond. Um, and I think that's what's, what's hurting us is that sometimes as a, as a small firm, uh, we are 20 employees here. And so it's most important to make sure that we explain everything and give every family all of the options. And sometimes it's not convenient. But one thing about it though, when you became a funeral director, death wasn't convenient and it never will be convenient. We don't know the time, nor do we know the hour. We are operation that's available 24 seven, 365, including holidays. And so we have to be available to assist these families. But when they give us a call and they reach out to us for professional services, it's our job to make sure that we don't take the easy route and make assumptions that we know what they want 
or we just make it simple when sometimes it can be very complex and in the details of planning. In this first episode of Success Leaves Clues, we've reviewed um, some of the some of the things that are just uh, so clearly um, uh, just so important in in a quality funeral service provider: uh, integrity, ceremony, innovation, um, and um, and staying away from uh, making sure that you're offering families options. Yes. Yes. That's so important. That's just so important. It, it, it really is. It is for us. But you know, one of the things about it, though, we are called funeral directors, which means we are to guide the families through the process. Families walk in and they you can't make the assumption that they know what's next. You know, there's, you know, 150 things that we're going to touch in a funeral service. And we do this every day. But a family member does not. In fact, the average consumer only deals with a family twice in their lifetime, okay? And so with that being said, they may attend many funerals, but they're not at their family arrangement conference making the financial decision and making the choices of products and services, but they're in attendance. And so uh, it, is, it is important that we make sure that we give those families every option to celebrate a life to the very best of our abilities. Well, talking to you, I can see why your business has grown. Uh, we met two years ago uh, at Cana in uh, New York City. Yes, New York was great. Yeah. Great. And um, and just thank you so much for having me uh, in your beautiful funeral home and, and taking talking to the funeral directors on the first show of Success Leaves Clues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Funeral directors, thanks so much for watching. I'm Tyler Fraser. Until next time.